A couple weeks ago, I did a poll on my channel of if you could get a 338 caliber, what would you get? And the options I gave were obviously 338 Win Mag, 340 Weatherby, 338 Lapua, and 33 Nosler. And the purpose of the poll, without telling anyone, was really to see how popular or unpopular the 33 Nosler was. And I got a ton of comments about, don't forget about the 338.6, or just someone saying, I would get a 3. I would get a 338.6. So I was very intrigued by how popular this pretty much dead cartridge is. So in today's video, we're going to do a deep dive into the 338.6 and see why so many people are fans of it. Let's just start out with a little bit of the history of the 338 cartridges. Uh, the 338 started getting more popular and relevant when Winchester introduced their 338 Winchester Magnum, and that was in 1958. And it's still one of the most popular 338s. It's a great cartridge for Alaska. And then in 1962, Weatherby wanted to one-up Winchester, and so what they did was they took a 300 Weatherby, necked it up to 338, and that is how you have the 340 Weatherby Magnum. And then in the mid 80s, Lapua designed a cartridge for the military. And uh, well, it's one of the most renowned cartridges in the world. That is the 338 Lapua Magnum. In the late 90s, Weatherby finally introduced a Wildcat, the 338 378 Weatherby, which is the fastest 338 cartridge that's. A Sammy spec cartridge. Obviously there's Wildcats that are much more powerful. And then in 1999-2000 Remington introduced the 338 Rum. And those are most of them. So when did the 338.6 officially become a Sammy spec cartridge? Same year as Weatherby introduced it. 1998 A square introduced it as a Sammy spec cartridge and you know I kind of thought this was a mostly dead cartridge but I think there's a lot of fans of it so let's just go check out the performance now long before a square introduced this as a Sammy cartridge in 1998 uh, well it was a wildcat that was started roughly around 1958 so around the same time as the 338 Winchester Magnum and what it is is what you think it is. It's just a 30 6 casing necked up to 338. And one of the great things about necking up a cartridge is, well, you're going to get better performance, as you'll see in a second. So with that larger diameter bullet, there's more for it to push out and get higher velocities. So if you were to, say, shoot a 180 grain in 30 6 and a 180 grain and a 338.6, you're going to get a bit more velocity in the 338.6. So let's take a look. First off, 185 grain at 3,000 feet per second. 30.6, you're going to get 2,800. A 200 grain at 2,900 feet per second. A 225, this is kind of the heaviest bullet I think would be ideal for a 338.6 and it's 2700. It's pretty crazy. As most 30-06 180 grain bullets are going 2700 and that's what you can get with a 225 by just necking it up to 338. Pretty awesome. And then if you want to go bigger, 250 at 2600. So, as I said, I think your sweet spot is 180 to 225 for the 338-06. Let's go ahead and look at some ballistic numbers with the 338.6 with a 200 grain with a BC of 0.455, muzzle velocity, according to Hornady, 2,900 feet per second. It's moving. Look at that. Energy, 3,735 foot-pounds. Now, to put into perspective, the 30.6, it's going to have its foot-pounds at the muzzle anywhere from 29 to up to 32 around is max. So this is going to be 500 more foot-pounds of energy just by necking it up to 338. Now let's go ahead and take this out 
to 500 yards. Bullets still going 1,966 feet per second, 1,717 foot-pounds of energy at 500. That's really good. And 50.5 inches a drop. This thing is quite the performer. And I kind of want to see how it compares now with cartridges that are really close to it. Let's first start with the parent cartridge, the granddaddy of them all, the 30 6 with a 180 grain AccuBond at 2,800 feet per second. Your muzzle energy, 3,134 foot-pounds. And then we will just compare them all at 400 yards. Your energy, 1,803 foot-pounds and 29 inches of drop. Not too shabby. It's a, it's a good load. Let's move on to the 338.6. This time we are going to use a 225 grain AccuBond at 2,700 feet per second. And your energy, again, 500 more foot-pounds than a 30.6 at 3,643 foot-pounds. At 400 yards, 2,175 foot-pounds. So 300 more foot-pounds, over 300. And two inches more of drop. Really close to the 30 out of 6, at least in drop. Let's move up to the 338 Winchester Magnum. Same 225 grain of hockey bond at 2,800 feet per second. And you're going to get around 250 more foot-pounds of energy. And then at 400 yards, you're getting almost 200 more foot-pounds of energy and the least amount of drop, but they are all so close. They're all within three inches of each other. Yeah, not a huge difference, and I can see why people really love the 338-06. Looking at the performance, the efficiency of the cartridge, and just how much better it is than a 30-06, I can see why people like it. Yes, I think this is heads and shoulders better than a 30 6 especially if you want to shoot heavy bullets. I understand 30 6 you could shoot a 130 grain down to a 100 grain bullet, so you could get it really going fast, but if you're looking for mild recoil and something easy to reload for, because all you need to do is get 30 6 brass, 338 6 is your answer. But let's talk about why it's pretty much a dead cartridge. Well, you can't buy factory rifles with the 338-06, and there is no factory ammo. There is custom ammo that you can buy. So, yeah, this is a dead cartridge, unfortunately. Why is it dead? I think, uh, well, 338 is not that popular. It just had to go up against the 338 Winchester Magnum, which honestly, I think this is a more efficient, maybe even better version of a 338 Win Mag. But, you know, people like what's established and what you can get ammo in. 